this is the ARP 2600. We're going to focus on the oscillators, which is a great place to start. The amount of frequency that is available here is quite large. So a huge amount of frequency is represented in this small piece. So to tune here, you have to be extremely precise. And it's actually more, use, more easy to use the fine tune, but I obviously didn't do that. So um, tuning gets to be an issue. And um, when you're in the middle of a song, you want to reach up and grab an oscillator and just go wild with the pitch, um, you have to pay the piper later. You're not going to be able to get away with that. At some point, you're going to have to tune again. And it's not like something you can just do on the fly while the song is playing, or it's not very easy to do that. So for example, while we've got the tuning set up, here is oscillator one demonstrating the width of frequency available through the coarse tuning knob. If I play a lower note, get down into the clicks. And if I play a higher note, we're right out of the audio range. But basically, from the center of the keyboard, you've got quite a range. So, now it's like, okay, where's A? <laughs> Is it, uh, how many, you know, hertz are we looking at here? Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's why you need to have a tuner uh, to really... tune it effectively. So as you can see... That is not something you're, want to, you're going to want to be doing in a live performance setting, and it's kind of irritating to even have to do it here. So, but it's the first thing you do when you turn the 2600 on and you intend to play something or especially record something. The next thing you do is test all of the other oscillators to see if they're in tune too, and let's see. Okay, there's oscillator two and oscillator three. Okay, now all of the oscillators are in tune and we can get rid of this lovely orange chord. So, we're gonna take a look at the ARP 2600's oscillators. Well, as we just seen, we have the initial oscillator frequency, which is basically a coarse tuning. And we have the fine tune, which is a fine tuning. Beyond that, you've really only got, as far as just the straight oscillator goes, these two outputs. Now, one of them is a sawtooth waveform, and one of them is a square waveform. However, without a cable in it, it's going to be directing a square waveform to the mixer section in the filter. To uh, Here we have VCO1 and it shows a square wave and sure enough, we've got a square wave coming out of there. And that's great and if uh, it turns out you don't want a square wave, that's when you plug something into the sawtooth output and plug it into VCO1. And now you have the saw wave. That is oscillator one, as far as straightforward oscillator aspects go. Um, the rest of the sliders that you see down here are about modulation. The ARP 2600 is the king of modulation. It's a monster when it comes to modulation, at least as far as normal semi-modular synths go. But it is bent on modulation, as you can see. Well, let's take a look at what we have right here. It's a little tiny switch down in the corner that says audio and LF. That is for audio and low frequency, meaning this oscillator and the other two oscillators are able to be switched from being an audio oscillator to a low frequency oscillator so that you can use 
any of these to be an audio oscillator or a modulation source at any point. They can also be used as a modulation source when they are an audio oscillator, but we'll get to that too. Right now we have it set to audio, obviously. Then we can switch it to low frequency and now it would be a modulation source with an output of the square wave or the saw wave, which is great. You can tell what the normal settings are by these handy graphics. They will tell you what these sliders will do if you don't command them to do differently. Right now, um, this slider controls the sample and hold input into this oscillator. So let's hear it. By being able to control the amount of sample and hold that controls the pitch, you can get very slight variations that don't even sound like sample and hold, but add motion and a liveliness to the oscillator. And that amount of pitch variation, as relatively subtle as it is, is the sort of thing that gives you a very big sound. And one of the reasons why this synthesizer is so desirable is because you are able to add subtle variations like that to all the oscillators in lots of different ways, which gives it a very organic sound. Uh, the second slider is ADSR, the envelope controlling the oscillator's pitch. then you can just use a very small amount of that just to alter the pitch a slight amount, not enough for it to sound like it's going out of tune, but enough to give it a little bit of um, variation and use it in combination with say, The next input we have is a sine wave from VCO2 which is absolutely fantastic because you get an amazing variation of effect uh, when one oscillator is modulated by another oscillator. When they're tuned to the same pitch, you're not going to get as much fun as if they are tuned to different pitches. Here goes the tuning on oscillator two, and this is the sad thing. Okay, I'm looking for exciting modulation, but I'm about to destroy the tuning that I had set, and that's the sort of thing that goes through your mind because of the tuning arrangement on the ARP 2600. It's like, oh, this is expensive. Do I choose to modulate in this fashion knowing that I'll have to go back and tune? But I'm going to make that decision right now. I'm going to be reckless. Let's go with it. Okay, so that's a great frequency modulation noise. Wow, that's buzzy and it's irritating, and hey, that's a real cool effect. However, that's just scratching the surface. That's only the sine wave. You can also choose, oh, I've got out the patch cord. You can also choose other waveforms um, to get different effects. So a lot of fun can be had with that. And again, once again, um, 
Subtle amounts can lead to subtle flavoring, which makes desirable sounds.